football is anyone's game where anything can happen on any given Sunday. So when two analysts, an NFL legend, and a banana get together to talk about this unpredictable season, well, that's almost as exciting as the game itself. The majority of the Zoom interviews I've done before this have been in like a tank top and a beanie. And then my producer told me today, she's like, listen, you're gonna have to dress it up a little bit. I literally just pulled this out of the closet. Well, I don't even have socks on. I don't have pants on. I got foot on. I think we can all agree that this is probably gonna go down as the most unique season in NFL history. This season is a different bit of uncertainty because we're talking about health. You know, we talk about having asterisks beside records and stuff like this. The asterisk yeah. this year is going to be the pandemic. From a purely objective non-health strategy standpoint, I find this year to be more compelling than, than many before in a weird way. All 32 teams have the same disadvantage. Who's going to make that an advantage? Who's going to be the most disciplined, especially early in the season when they're really, really mad? I'm very weary of how long they'll be able to play. That's where my caution and apprehension comes into play. So it's just a matter of how long they can, they can make this work outside of a bubble. I think the bubble is the key. After 16 incredible years, had you not retired this season, would you have played? Oh, that's a great question. And I'm glad it's one that I didn't have to uh, approach with my wife because she already looked at me and said, I'm glad we don't have to have this discussion because you mm -hmm. want to be playing. There's a lot of confusion when it comes down to what exactly is the risk. And I think you've seen a lot of players err on the side of safety. Do you feel like the NFL is doing enough to protect the players, to protect the coaches, to protect the refs. When it comes to the games, we'll see, because we're talking about 80, 90 people per sideline. But up to this point, I have to say, absolutely. So I was referred to as the Tom Brady of the challenge, but now that I have seven championships and he only has six, they're uh, now referring to Tom Brady as the Johnny Bananas of the NFL. I gotta write I, that yeah. down. I learned something new, yeah. learned something new every day. <laughs> What are your thoughts on Brady's move to the Buccaneers? Man, you should have just ended it on top or he pushing the envelope at 43. I mean, the guy, he can still play football. His physical skills are not declining the way you may think someone 43 years old should be declining. And he would probably argue that because he had to learn a new playbook, he got some new neuron connections that he didn't have before. And so that gave him a little more energy. Um, it's going to be phenomenally fascinating to, 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 to begin to see an answer of was it all Bill or was it mm -hmm. more Bill than, than Tom versus the other? That said, Tom is going to Bruce Arians, who is a two-time NFL coach of the year. He's got Ronald Jones Jr., a great young running back. He's got two stud tight ends in O.J. Howard and Gronk. I love Tom Brady, and I cannot wait Brady. to see what he does in Tampa Bay with those weapons. I love Tom Brady, and I'm excited to see Tampa Bay, but I have to rain on the parade a little bit because you guys are just hype squad 5,000. We can't. <laughs> also... This isn't the AFC East we're talking about, gentlemen. This is not the hapless Jets. This is not the Buffalo Bills who have nothing going on. This is New Orleans. Do you think any team has a bigger advantage in the National Football League this year than Drew Brees? No, wait, wait, wait. When's the last time New Orleans won a Super Bowl? I'm trying to, let me, when's the last that time New Orleans won a Super Bowl? The Bay versus the Bayou. That's what it is for me. Switching sides here. So we just talked about the Buccaneers. On the Patriots side, what kind of chemistry do you predict between Cam Newton and Julian Edelman? Chemistry is built by repetition. Unfortunately for them, they haven't had very much repetition. And so I'm not expecting for them to jump out of the gate like I would expect Drew Brees and his receivers who have been together for several years. There's never been more pressure on a quarterback than Cam Newton, given the fact that eight of those players opted out. He's filling in the shoes of the greatest of all time. He's a figure that's larger than life. I don't know, because of all the injuries, do you think Cam has that the same amount of pressure as if he was coming off another great season, in which case I wouldn't have been let go by Carolina. Cam, where he is now in his career, been an MVP, understands who he is and yes, has a chip on his shoulder and wants to prove some things. He's not feeling like he has to be anybody. So what you're essentially saying then is Cam Newton coming into the Patriots is under less pressure than one of Tom Brady's footballs. <laughs> I didn't say that. You did and that was a really, really funny joke. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and laugh. <laughs> a lot of hot button topics this season. Colin Kaepernick, uh, BLM, uh, Redskins name change, obviously COVID. If you had to give the NFL season a single tagline, what would it be? Kay, I'm gonna go to you first. In a league full of superstars and touchdown dances, it's the coaches that take center stage. I think wow. The world revolves around them. That's my 2020 tagline. Print that. What about you, Siafa? The NFL 2020, here till we're not. <laughs>
<laughs> ben, you got uh, one? I'm going to call it the, the coronation. The coronation. Ooh. Crowning a champion during okay. the global pandemic. And the play is on, if you didn't see it, you know, the play is on Corona. Boldest prediction for the 2020 season. Um, boldest prediction is that KC does not reap. Ooh. To me, okay. I don't know how they're going to deal with success. The last team to repeat was the team you played for your rookie year. Exactly. That was the last team to repeat, 2003-2004 Patriots. They beat the Eagles in 2004. Oh. <laughs> we got revenge, so it's all good. Yeah, but give us an Eagles prediction. Give us some good, good vibes out there for your squad. That was my prediction. Uh, Carson Wentz becomes a top five quarterback in the NFL again. He's got some speed on his team this year. He's fully healthy. He added some weight for the wear and tear of a full season. Carson Wentz becomes a top five quarterback again in 2020. Siapa, I just met you today. I really like your energy, so I'll double down with you on the Eagles, shall I? Yes, sure, please. I'll do it. I'll say Miles Sanders is the number one thing that he was incredible last season when finally given the opportunity when he left the time show that he had with Jordan Howard. I believe he wants to best buddy uh, from Penn State, Saquon Barkley. I think he does it. It's going to be a uh, interesting NFL season, to say the least. Um, and let's just hope that we get this pandemic under control and that everybody out there that's just been like yearning for sports and the NFL uh, gets their fix. Stay safe, everybody. Nice to meet you guys. All right. I'll see you guys. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. For more, subscribe to First Look and come with me on all my adventures around the world. Who am I kidding? I'm probably sitting at home watching Netflix or playing Xbox. Either way, what are you waiting for? Just hit subscribe already.